In the previous video, Rachel mentioned that there are two different types of epithelial tissue present in the human body. Membranous epithelium, which covers external and internal body surfaces, and glandular epithelium, which is better known as glands. Later this week, Rachel will talk about glands in more detail. But for now, let's talk about membranous epithelium. Membranous epithelium can be classified into different types based on the following two features. Firstly, the number of cell layers present, and secondly, the shape of the epithelial cells. Here's a short animation which I've prepared to help explain the concept of classifying epithelia. Recently, I discovered on Wikipedia that David Beckham, Angelina Jolie and I are all the same age. That got me thinking, do we have anything else in common? Are we all fabulously wealthy, incredibly good looking, or maybe famous all around the world? Well, I may not be any of those things, but we do share at least one other thing in common. Each of us has two parts to our name, a first name and a last name. And guess what? So does epithelial tissue. In epithelial tissue, the first name always indicates the number of cell layers present, whilst the second name indicates the shape of the cells. Let's look at the number of cell layers first. If only one layer of cells is present, we call the epithelium simple. Simple epithelium is found where rapid absorption or diffusion occurs, because material can pass really quickly through just one layer of cells. If more than one layer of cells is present, we call the epithelium stratified. Stratified epithelium is located in regions where we need protection against abrasion, friction and bacteria, like for example the skin. Next, let's look at the shape of epithelial cells. If the cells are flat, we call the epithelium squamous. If the cells are cube-like, we call the epithelium cuboidal. And if the cells are column-shaped, the epithelium is, you guessed it, columnar. So to summarise, if you're asked to name epithelium, first state the number of cell layers present, and then the shape of the cells. Here are some common examples of epithelium. Simple squamous, simple cuboidal, and simple columnar. And then stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, and stratified columnar. But wait, there's more. Our bodies have two other very special types of epithelium, which I haven't yet mentioned. These are pseudostratified columnar epithelium and transitional epithelium. This is what pseudostratified columnar epithelium looks like. Pseudo means false or fake. The epithelium looks stratified, but it's actually not. There is only one layer of cells present because all of the cells touch the basement membrane. Pseudostratified columnar epithelium secretes a sticky mucus and a cilia on its surface. It's found in the nasal cavity where mucus traps dust in the air, preventing it from getting into your lungs. And cilia moves the dust and mucus towards your throat where it's swallowed. Finally, let's look at transitional epithelium. Transitional epithelium is a special type of stratified epithelium that can stretch without breaking. Transitional epithelium is found in the bladder because the bladder has to stretch as it fills with urine. In an empty bladder, the cells are cuboidal in shape, but as the bladder fills with urine, the epithelial cells stretch and become squamous in shape. It's because the cells change shape that we call this epithelium transitional. I hope that helped you understand how epithelial tissue is classified. Take a look at the next interactive activity to learn more about where each type of epithelial tissue is found in the human body and what it does.